Hosanna, loud Hosanna. The Palm, Palm Sunday is known as Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And we often celebrate that with a palm parade praising Jesus. I have fond memories of parading around my church, waving palms and shouting Hosanna. Albeit they're probably fond because it was one of the few times we got to move around the church instead of sitting quietly. And the hymns were more lively, uh, were livelier and, and more joyous than sometimes in the church, especially after the long season of Lent. But what was that really what was happening in this story? Now, don't get me wrong. It would have absolutely been something phenomenal to experience. The crowds, Jesus' entry causing a near frenzy as crowds of people were clambering to get a glimpse of him and shouting Hosanna and waving palm branches, waving whatever they could get their hands on. But what was it that got them so riled up? It was stories, stories of Jesus and the lives that he had been changing that drew such an energetic crowd. It was the stories that gave them hope that he was the one who was going to put an end to the oppression and corruption that was so much a part of their daily -day lives. The one to draw them in to community instead of casting them out. The one who would finally put the government and temple authorities in their place. He was to be their savior from all the brokenness. So no wonder they fled to the streets shouting, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. But were they ready for Jesus? Like the disciples, the crowds of people simply didn't get it. They didn't understand. They didn't fully believe. So they threw Jesus a conqueror's parade, waving palm branches, which are a sign of military victory, and shouting Hosanna, which means save us now. They called him Lord and King, expecting him to rule with power and might. <laughs> and instead, they got a man riding the colt of a donkey. They only knew one type of ruler, and though they sensed that Jesus was different, in their hearts and minds, they were just plugging him into the only system they knew. They weren't able to imagine a new way of being. They weren't ready for Jesus. And so the question is, are we? Are we ready for Jesus? Or are we like the crowds expecting a savior that will single-handedly fix what is wrong with our world using power, might, and miracles? Or are we willing to accept that the, we play a significant role in bringing about God's kingdom? Are we placing our allegiance and support behind whomever we perceive to be the strongest? Or are we prepared to live our convictions, our beliefs, like Jesus did? Are we ready to stand for love even when it is uncomfortable and might even get us in trouble with the authorities? 
Are we ready to believe? We've mentioned that John's gospel is unique. And one of the ways it is unique is in its focus on belief. Belief that Jesus is the Son of God. And all that comes with that when we believe. Jesus gave us many signs and miracles to show the disciples, the growing crowds, and yes, even us today, that the wonders that can happen when one chooses to believe. New life, a new world, welcome, unconditional love, communities built on peace and justice. These are the stories that drew the crowds that day. But they didn't really get it. They didn't understand that what it takes to make a better world is not power and might or rigid rules. Jesus showed them and us over and over again that what it takes to build God's kingdom is love. Unconditional love for our neighbors is far more powerful than any army, more powerful than even death. The scripture we heard this morning says, at first they didn't understand these things, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered these things had been written of him and had been done to him. Palm Sunday presents us with a choice. We can choose to remember these stories, to believe that Jesus is the one, the Son of God, and follow his way of love. Or we can choose to follow whichever imperial ruler imperial ruler has the biggest advertising campaign to make us believe that they stand for change. The choice is ours, and we need to choose it every day and in all that we say and do. For the hope of the world is that we will choose to believe Jesus is Lord of our lives and that we will choose to spend our time and energy showing that to the world. Remember last week when the Greeks came and said, show me Jesus? That story actually comes right after Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. That is the Jesus that they wanted to see. That is the Jesus that we are called to show to the world. So friends, what about our lives, our choices, our words, our actions, reveal Jesus to the world? Is there anything in our living that would draw people yearning for hope? And if not, what is it that we need to change? This Palm Sunday, as we wave branches and sing hosannas, may we not be like those on the crowded street, looking for the wrong kind of king and working towards the wrong kind of kingdom. Instead, may we choose to believe. May we believe with every fiber of our being so that our living turns the world upside down like Jesus did. May we love the unlovable 
and forgive those who have betrayed us. May we give up our privilege and comfort in trade for justice and care for the fullness of creation. May we let go of what we think we need and follow the way of love. May our living be hope for the world. And may our hearts be open this holy week so we do not miss the one who came to save the world from brokenness. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Save us now. Amen.